<laughs> Let's play it. Let's play it. Okay, hooray. It's time for the topic of the day. Hip, hip, hooray. It's, it's time, time for, for the, the topic, topic of the day. day. Not at all the sound it makes. It's you, not. Your hair's looking good today. Thank you. Yeah. Quaffed. Quaffed. Very good. Anyway, we're going to talk about, um, I, so I brought this up to you like a month ago now yep. and it's been a month because we were supposed to record and we didn't, and then we've just been posting the interviews. Yeah. Um, pastor Robert Madu from, uh, Social Dallas. Social Dallas. Dallas again. Dallas again. Yeah. Home of the champions. Yeah. He, he, he really actually, he rails actually, on your Timberwolves. Yeah, he he did. But actually, during the message that we were talking about now, he said he's asking for prayer for the Cowboys. You know what I said at the beginning? Who needs serious help and prayer? Yeah. He I think did. it's more so because of their fan base. Really? Yeah, their fan base. Their fan base specifically from horrible. Canada? Horrible. Yeah. Market Canadian t- uh, cities? Their fan base from uh, from Winnipeg. <laughs> Royalwood, to be precise. <laughs> That's not Do you precise. want me to give the exact address on <laughs> don't, don't, but it rhymes with Sh- Sean Roos. No, I was just going to bleep the whole thing out, so you don't have to rhyme it. <laughs> so, uh, Robert Madu, who just ran the marathon, uh, I think uh, in the past week. Yeah. What did he run? He never said. Did he run a 5K, 10K? He said he ran K? the marathon, but like two weeks before he said, uh, well, it's downgraded to the half and it might be less. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh, I finished the marathon. I don't know. I question it. He, Maybe we can get him on the show. Yeah, I'd like to get him on the show. So um, he is the pastor of a place called Social Dallas. Uh, me and my family visited there last year. Amazing uh, atmosphere, friendly, excitable. Excitable, is that a word? Yeah. Um, and and just overall, like just a great presence in that building with the people. The security. The, the security. <laughs> there's a lot of security there. A very secure building, which is good. Um, but also it's Dallas. Yeah. Right. Like it's expected in the American cities in Texas. Uh, everybody carries their weapons, but anyway, that's beside the point. So he talked on this, uh, this clip that we're going to show here about discipline. So let's just show the clip real quick and, um, we'll go from there. Your current level of discipline will not sustain the leader that I'm calling you to be. Your current level of discipline will not sustain the leader I'm calling you to be. Ladies and gentlemen, that word is still indelibly etched in my mind and my heart and my spirit, so much so that even today in 2024, I am asking myself, does my current level of discipline sustain the leader that God has called me to be. The power of discipline, not my current level of gifting, not my current level of talent, not my current level of charisma or anointing, because how many of you know talent, gifting, charisma, and anointing will only take you so far. Nothing great in your life will happen without Nothing great will happen or be sustained in the kingdom of God without you have to have discipline. So yeah, we both watched the, uh, it was called Hurt So Good. That was the title. It'll uh, It'll be linked below. Yeah. Of the uh, message that he spoke about a month ago. And he talks about discipline. He basically, he was saying that uh, without discipline, it's very difficult uh, to live a life that's worthwhile. Uh, he talked about how um, there's always, everyone has one area uh, that they're undisciplined in, whether it's finances, uh, whether it's uh, physical activity, uh, whether it's controlling your mind, things of that nature. Everyone has that one area yeah. that they struggle with. And he went on to some definitions of uh, what discipline is, uh, but then we had some questions that we had that maybe we could discuss here uh, in this format, uh, that, uh, what to you, I'll ask you the question, what is discipline? What is the definition to you? Uh, the definition, uh, that's, that's a good question. I didn't look that up. And why do people push back at it? So I think discipline to me is the ability to do something on a regular basis that is of positive impact 
to your life. How's that? Does that sound good? The definition to me is the ability to do something on a regular basis that has positive impact on your life. Yeah. Uh, the one that I got from what he was saying was, uh, and there was a few that he said, it, he said, discipline is love. That was one of the statements that he made. Yeah. That was a pretty powerful one near the end of the message. But he also said, uh, d- discipline is delayed gratification for gratification later on. That was one that I picked up and I would agree with, uh, both of those. So I was listening to, um, Craig Rochelle's book, uh, just recently think ahead. I think it's called, have you heard of this book yet? I just came out. Uh, Oh no. Yeah. I've heard about it. This is his new one that just came out. Um, and he talks a lot about discipline as well, which is actually kind of weird because it's timely right now. And he talks about the discipline in, in terms of like, so he's going through, uh, in his ministry and he's like learning, he's doing his pastoral stuff and everything like that. And, you know, he, he talks about like, um, sex before marriage, yeah. right? The discipline to not have that, the delayed gratification right? in order to have something that's greater yeah. at the time of being married. Um, and I, th- I think Madhu touched on that too during the message, okay. specifically as a point. And then there's also, um, he talks about discipline for a lot of different things in this book, which is kind of funny. The book is called Think Ahead and it, it's, it's more so about the fact that like, think about your future before doing something that may change it. Right. If that makes sense. Well, you're counting the costs. You're counting the costs either now or counting the costs later on. Right? Yeah. Do I uh, eat unhealthy and enjoy my life and then there's always pain somewhere? Yeah. It's either pain for uh, having the kale salad, which I don't need to have kale salad, uh, but uh, making the right choices now, that pain yeah. versus the pain of you know when I'm 60 years old not being able to walk up a flight of stairs yeah. because I've made those unhealthy choices, right? By the way, health now... If you haven't noticed in the last four, three to four years, the amount of churches that are talking about health, not just physical health, but mental health yeah. is cr- like almost every month there, we're talking about some type of health. And I think we can transition health into discipline as being part of the same yeah. subject, right? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I, I think that's quite interesting um, as far as that's concerned. Um, so, but, so is discipline a bad word? So in today's I, culture I, then? So to me, it, it, it can be constructed as something like for me, I compared, uh, I think, uh, the words budget with diet. Remember we talked yeah, to Adam Bakel. Uh, Adam Bakel and I said, <laughs> yeah, I, I think budgets really help just because it's very tangible. So for me, I'm just going to cut you off there. Yeah. Uh, as soon <laughs> for a spender, as soon as we hear the word budget. And this happens to me as soon as you use that word, it's like a keyword that makes my brain go spinny, spinny, spinny. And I just like, just tune out because it seems like a di- like for someone who likes to eat, it seems like the word diet. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it's like a curse word. <laughs> right. Um, so for me, when I say budget, it's like someone who has issues with um, overeating saying the word diet. Diet has a negative connotation, right? Yep. Or budget does too, right? Where it's like, you think you're, it's restrictive, Right. If I can't eat these things, if I can't spend this money, I feel like I'm restricted. So for the me, do, 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 go off in your uh, head. So for me, and and I'll I'll throw myself under the bus or be mm-hmm. honest in that I say that the one area that I and he and he said there's one area that and maybe people disagree with that. Maybe people think there's not one area. Maybe yeah. some people are disciplined in every single area of life. But for me, uh, I would agree with him and say the one area that I l- l- can lack discipline is uh, for spending. Right? Mm-hmm. I I won't I, or at least in the past. Yeah. haven't saved enough and I've just spent everything, right? Yeah. And there's uh, certain psychological whatever reasons, you know, that maybe when I grew up, I didn't have that much. And and so I'm worried that if I, if I, if, if I don't spend it, I'm not going to be able to do those things and have yeah. those things, right? Uh, but that's my uh, one area, right? But whereas when we talk to somebody that says, well, where's, you know, you're always going to spend money. But where is your pain? Is your pain now to save it? And then you can enjoy it later. Yeah. When you have when you have lots in the bank and you can do all those things, you know, where where do you choose your pain? Yeah. Right. So that's that's my area. And that's if I'm talking to myself, that's what I tell myself. But yes, it can be a negative word. It shouldn't be. 
but it can be. Discipline. Uh, how, how about this? Is it bad to say, you, you can't even say, can you say I discipline my kids? Yeah. It, no, you, you I, think that, I think that word is taboo. I think discipline is a taboo for a discipline. We, we'd say, no, it's, we don't call it discipline. Because now in, in our generations, we don't call it discipline. It's self-directing. Or, I've never called it self-directing. It's no, discipline. To me, no, it's discipline. But, but that is the trend. But I think I'm different than, than you, maybe. No, I'm not. I'm or maybe just, I just don't listen I, to that I'm stuff. I'm not saying I, I agree with it, but yeah. that is the trend. Discipline. We don't discipline our kids because that has a, a connotation. You're bad. You sit in a corner. Uh, <laughs> uh, 30 years ago, we got the strap. Well, we don't do the strap, but we or, do or discipline the our kids. Or whatever so, it is, right? Like there'll be a time where one of my kids is having a meltdown at supper. Yeah. And I'll literally just say, go sit in your room. Yeah. And you can come back out as yeah. soon as you're calm. And someone would say that's self, that's self directing. That's not discipline. It's discipline. You've redirected them. No, it's discipline because I'm disciplining them to understand that in, when they're upset, right. they need to take a moment to breathe, yeah. to relax, to reflect. Right. They're creating a discipline. Yeah. Maybe I'm working on creating a discipline for them. Right. But the discipline is when you're upset, don't just scream and yell and throw your yeah. hands up and ask for everything for, for yourself. No. Take a moment. Gather yourself. Breathe. So you believe discipline is not a verb? Because discipline means to me, to someone would say discipline is an action that you take against Someone a child. Discipline is definitely a verb. But when you said when you said discipline, you said create a discipline in the child. Yeah, a in, discipline in, is in, a verb. In that case, you are not doing an action; you are teaching them a lesson. I'm teaching them how to be disciplined, right? And I think that's slightly and different. discipline. I, I still think it's a verb. Okay, but you know, one of your questions here was: Does everyone have one area we're not disciplined in? Right. Do you, Do you believe that? Uh, I can't, everyone? I can't speak everyone. for everyone. I cannot speak for everyone in the entire world. I can. Everyone has somewhere they're not disciplined. Okay. I'm not prepared to make that. So. Guaranteed 100%. If I said, are you disciplined 100% in your life? Right. On everything that you do? Yeah. No. What's yours? You know why? Because nobody's perfect. Okay. What's yours? My discipline? What's, what's the one area that you struggle with? Uh, probably like my health. Like okay. my regular eating properly and exercising properly. You, so you, I was disciplined in it for a long time, and I fell out of it during uh, the 2020 season, and right. it never really came back. Um, what you're saying is you me, struggle with consistency. I'm struggling with the discipline to continue to do it every right. day. Right. I think that uh, Drew Dudley's book talks about that would, it that really be, well. That would be consistency. And when he says every, every day is day one, yeah. um, showing that as a, like, that's a discipline to have every day as a day one right. is a discipline, not a consistency. Right. Because it means that you are actively and consciously choosing to do that. And that's not a consistency right. because you have to discipline yourself to do that. You have to discipline yourself to get ready for the marathon. Yeah. You have to discipline yourself to not eat sugar. Yeah. You have to discipline yourself to not smoke if you're a smoker. Yeah. Like th that's a discipline. It, so going back to what you said for Drew Dudley, there was a point that he made. I, th I, th I think it was Drew Dudley who said that people avoid pain and they shouldn't necessarily avoid pain because pain is not your enemy. It, was that Drew Dudley that talked about that? I can't remember. Uh, whereas that that's what in our culture, in our day and age, we move away from pain. Anything bad is to be avoided. Yeah. And the point that people that are talking about discipline is, no, there is a pain. When you go to, uh, Madhu talked about going to Orange Theory, right? Yeah. And he said, that, <laughs> that didn't feel so good. It hurt yeah. temporarily, right? Yeah. So if he were to avoid the pain of going to the gym, which hurts. Yeah. Like I haven't, I honestly, I, I, today was such a beautiful day this morning. I wish I had gone for a run, but I, yeah. I just didn't, I didn't have a time. Uh, but I would, you know, it doesn't feel good four miles into a run. You feel like stopping. Like, why would anyone do that? But that's because that pain is for another gain. Yeah. Right. And the, I remember the old, uh, the old adage, no pain, no gain. Yeah. Right. 
And and then all of a sudden the world's like, well, you can't live by that mantra because yeah. no pain, no gain means that you have to have pain yeah. in order to have gain, which I truly think that if you lived by that, yeah. you would actually gain more. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you, and that's a good point. I always tell this to people, but when whenever I'm on a run, yeah. um, there is pain that's going through your body, not all the time. But I always find that you have to differentiate what pain your body is telling you, right? Yeah. There's a, your body will tell you, and your body lies to you all the time. I'm tired. Um, this is horrible. I need to stop. And that's, then you need to know when that's to be avoided. No, shut up. This is, you're telling me lies. But then sometimes your body can tell you real pain and then it's bad pain. Yeah. Right? That knee, something is going on. I need to stop. Yeah. And and when you exercise, and this is just for the, you know, that's not just for exercise, but some pain, not all pain is good. No. Nope. And not all pain is bad. It's your we body's, talked about that with yeah. Dr. Dan a little bit. It was Dr. Dan, sorry. And he was saying that your body's reaction to yeah. pain sometimes is a healing reaction. Yeah. Right? And sometimes you have to like not take that Tylenol yeah. because your body is reacting to the pain and the pain is actually healing you as yeah. opposed to He talked about like it, it was a warning signal. Like yeah. The, in the car analogy, I said that, you know, when it says all the engine the lights check light engine on, light. And you no, said, yeah. All my uh, yeah. check engine lights are on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but, but, but yeah, like when, when do you recognize, <clears throat> it goes down to how well do you know your own body and how honest you are. And sometimes I find people, and this is, goes back to the pushback from Ali Raposo's uh, interview where people, I think, sometimes aren't honest with themselves because it's easier to be dishonest. Yeah. I can't work out. I can't save money. I can't because it's too hard. Yeah. And I'd rather just identify with um, my lack yeah. instead of do the hard work to improve it. Yeah. Right. And I think some of the and I'm not trying to judge the comments that were flying at, uh, I think, the uh, whatever you posted, uh, but I am saying sometimes that is the case. Yeah, which goes into that whole comment uh, earlier about gratitude and anxiety. There is a discipline in being grateful. Yeah. And if you're disciplined in being, in practicing gratitude, yeah. your life does change. Yeah. And I, I'm... 100% going to tell you right now if you every time you felt anxious yeah. instead of worrying you let that go yeah and you showed and you just talk about what you're grateful for say it out loud to yourself yeah because the words are powerful right yeah. if you just say it in your head it's not as powerful but if you say it out loud to yourself what was that Stuart Stuart Smalley or whatever I'm good enough I'm good enough I'm strong, strong enough, enough and doggone dog it, it people, people like, like me, me yeah um, don't have to be like that, Yeah. but to say like, Hey, I'm grateful for my health today. Yeah. I'm grateful that I can, I woke up this morning and that my kids were healthy today. Yeah. I'm grateful that my car worked today. Yeah. I'm grateful that, you know, the rain came Yeah. because now I don't have to water my grass. Yeah. Right. Like it's little things yeah. that you can be grateful for that, um, our, um, the, the, the business I work with, um, every morning they have a morning meeting and one of the parts to the morning meeting is moment of gratitude. Right. And everybody on the call has to say what they're grateful for. And some of them will be grateful for Tim Horton's coffee. Some of them will be, be grateful that it's Friday. Yeah. Some will be grateful that, um, it's a beautiful day outside, yeah. whatever they're grateful for. They'll share what they're grateful for. And we don't discount you know, you're grateful for a coffee or you're grateful for a great day or grateful for health. Yeah. We say that those things are all being grateful. Right. Those are all gratitude. And, and not only that. And that's a discipline for them to do it every morning. Yeah. And not only that, but even if what you're saying has, isn't, you know, a, a coffee, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, it's not really what you're grateful for that's um, helping you necessarily. It could be. But it's also when you are stopped to be grateful for anything, you create a practice, you create a habit, mm -hmm. 
right? So, and that's one of the things that I think I need to do better is that, that intentionality, right? Mm-hmm. And you do that where I know you'll say something or you'll message something. I'm like, well, you're being intentional. You're saying this for a reason. Mm-hmm. Like you didn't just all of a sudden feel like saying, say, well, I, at, at 806, I'm sending the guys this message and you have an intentionality behind it. Mm-hmm. So that's something I noticed that you do. Um, and, and, and instead of having life just get thrown on you, you are saying, this is the reason I'm doing this. And you have some more intentionality in yeah. everything that you do. Right. And that's Today, really what, what discipline is. Right. Today. Thanks for watching the Greg and Tim show clips. Uh, if you want, click the subscribe button right in the middle here. And then there's an episode in front of me and an episode in front of Tim. Click on them. Keep on watching. Keep on watching and share with your friends. Thanks for watching the clip. Cheerio. Cheerio.